those days we could use a lot more time, but we have a huge hour coming your way as we continue live from above the Heineken River Deck at Pier 17 with Marcus and Jalen and Greeny and Laura and Ryan and Jay Will. Here's what's names. coming up. LeBron James making history, surpassing the all-time scoring total of the one and only Michael Jordan, but it comes on a terrible night for the Lakers. Stephen A. was there. He'll join us with reaction this hour. Plus, did the Celtics get a look at their future last night, and if so... Did they like what they saw? We'll answer those questions Trade in five minutes. Pass. And we are officially on AB Watch. All signs point to him being traded. Maybe today. Where's he going? What's he worth? We'll have you up to the minute as we get get up started right now. And it begins in L.A. last night. As we take a look at what this is where we were at this time yesterday on the all time scoring list, you see LeBron James 12 points behind his idol, Michael Jordan. And so he needed those 12 and he knew it was a big deal. And Jalen, he was going to get them and get them early in a game in which his team is getting blown out. He had the shoes ready. He had everything ready. And here in the second quarter, again, his team down 20. LeBron knocks that jumper down to tie Jordan all time for fourth. And here comes the bucket that moves him past Michael. A terrific honor for LeBron James, who, as he mentioned, grew up idolizing Michael Jordan, as so many of us did, to pass him on the lease. Scoring list is a phenomenal achievement. Yeah, Ryan said it correctly earlier. There are some things you can't just brush off. So you pass Michael Jordan <laughs> right. on the all-time scoring I mean, list. Imagine having posters of the guy and then be like, yeah, one day I'll score more points than he does. Yes, I had posters of him. And I have posters of you. I didn't score it. Yeah, yeah. oh, well, right, but we can't forget now, MJ left two years in his prime. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm surprised MJ didn't tweet out like, well, you played a lot more. Than Lakers. <laughs> In the meantime, that was the only good news for the Lakers last night. Look at Jokic for Denver. He's a terrific quarterback. Joe Flacco might be je jealous of that pass. He's a new quarterback in Denver. And in the Lakers, they can throw the ball away off of that. They're down as many as 23. Fourth quarter now, Lakers trying to make a comeback. They get it to within six. LeBron to the hole, yes. He would score 31. They're back in the game. How about this for irony? The guys that were the core of a trade possibly for Anthony Davis, none of them were available yesterday. Ball, Ingram, and Kuzma. And go ahead, LeBron, and get your record. Made a difference because Gary Harris was taking control of the game in the fourth quarter from the outside, then from the inside. And then they're playing defense. Look at Will Barton chasing down Josh Hart. You make a good point. This was a team that wanted it last night, the Nuggets, and the Lakers don't always look that way. Look at that nice pass. Barton to Jamal Murray. Murray scored 19. Barton had 23. Nuggets pulling away. And then here, we're going to add insult to injury. Guys, that's Rajon Rondo. He's been taken out of the game. There's two minutes left. There's not eight seconds left. There's two minutes left, and he is sitting with the fans. He's not sitting anywhere near his team. So just burn that image into your brain. We'll hear from LeBron, then we'll come back and talk about that. A lot of stuff that I've done in my career. Um, this ranks right up there at the top. Uh, we're winning a championship. MJ was that guy for me. Um, and I, I, I watched him from afar. Um, wanted to be like MJ. Wanted to shoot fadeaways like MJ. Wanted to stick my tongue out on dunks like MJ. Wanted to wear my sneakers like MJ. Um, I wanted kids to look up to me at some point like MJ. And um, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy, to be honest. I don't, it's, it's, it's beyond crazy. But you guys have no idea what, what, what MJ did for me and my friends growing up. Um, you know, just in a sense of, you know, some days where you just don't even feel like you're going you're gonna to make it to the next day where I grew up, you know, because of everything that's going on. So, like I wrote on my shoes tonight, like you saw, I, I thank MJ more than he would, uh, more than he'd ever known. And, uh, and I got to keep, I got to carry it on to the next kid. Hopefully I can inspire the next kid like myself. So obviously this is very significant to him and understandably so. The Lakers lose, but LeBron passes Michael Jordan, who had the lead thanks to a higher scoring average, but LeBron's longevity now over 100 more games played and counting has allowed him to surpass Michael Jeffrey Jordan. And so I, I don't want to just say, okay, period, new paragraph, let's get to the Lakers. But it sort of feels like that is the lead here. And I want to pick up on what you said during the highlight, because you hadn't said that before. We, we know that Rondo went and sat with the fans after the game is over. But how significant do you think it was that a lot of those young guys didn't play in this game? It's very significant because the Lakers season has clearly gotten away from them. They're not playing any meaningless, they're playing, basically playing meaningless games from here on out. So now it's about Who's going to be committed to the team? When you got a bunch of vets that are on one-year deals, like Rajon Rondo and Lance Stevenson, now all of a sudden they got to figure out what's next for them. 
We've got a bunch of young guys who are on rookie deals who are the core of a possible Anthony Davis trade. Now, all of a sudden, if I have an injury, oh, I'm definitely not playing. And so why would Lonzo Ball rush back? Brandon Ingram, the exact same thing. We saw Kyle Kuzma's injury. So it's going to be fascinating to see what happens with LeBron's minutes and this Laker team as the season progresses. This would be weird that in this year of disappointment, you have this headline, too. So, like, I'm, I'm not quite sure, like, are we supposed to stay on the LeBron part of this? Because I feel guilty immediately being like, yeah, they're still terrible on defense and they're probably going to tank the rest of the way here and all these and different Rondo things. Is he just passed Jordan, fans. right? But Ron, Rajon Rondo was just, let's, let's just get to it. Uh, the Rondo thing, fine. Uh, it's completely unacceptable, but it's also, if you're paying attention to the entire Rondo story, this is who he is. And when he was at Boston at the end, they couldn't get him out there quick enough. And then I actually give Rondo credit for it. But after he was gone from Boston, he's like, yeah, I didn't really play defense the last couple of years I was there. Got into it with Rick Carlisle. And, and here we go again. So I, I never understand, like, Rondo's such a unique, special talent. But when he decides he's out, like, he will, he will bail on you as quick as anyone in this league. Greeny, this is not a weird hairline. This is a bad team. That's a bad culture. Yeah. This is what happens when you're in a bad culture. And Rajon Rondo is kind of a basketball savant. He's a genius. So you can already tell he thinks he knows what he's doing way more than Luke Walton is doing. Well, he's thought so that every step. Every, every, every step coach. of the way. Every, so he, he's like, already checked out. But this is the epitome of where this team is. And by the way, it's a dumpster fire. It's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. So you play these meaningless games. You see, I kind of can't wait. Little You're right. That, like, it's going to get That's so what I'm weird. saying. That's why I go back to that original intention about LeBron shutting it down. I understand he got this whole thing. I understand the whole thing about Kobe would never shut it down. But it only gets worse. People were booing last night. Go back to Cleveland. Yeah. They were booing that last night at the, at the Laker game. So LeBron's not going to shut it down, as, as we've obviously seen here. When, when you look at who's to blame and how this can be fixed, because, I mean, that's got to be the next part of this. Maybe the dumpster fire happens, but who's going to fix it? Do you put more of the blame on Magic Johnson in the front office? Do you put It has more? to be on the front office. Yeah. They're the one that orchestrated this whole thing. It, yeah, I, I, just, I don't know how you answer one part, though. I mean, yes, they could have done a better job. I, I still think when you go back to last summer, once Paul George was not even an option, it's like, wait a minute, now what are you going to do? And you put together a roster of young guys that are worried about what's next, one-year vets that are worried about what's next. I don't blame them for going after Anthony Davis. I don't blame Clutch Sports for trying to make it nasty and making sure that they could make it so uncomfortable that maybe New Orleans just gave in and moved to Anthony Davis. But the problem is now is that, as you point out, Jalen, every one of those young dudes that had to read on Twitter that they were the latest name added to this package for Anthony Davis, those young guys are looking at LeBron going, like, sweet, you passed MJ and you're LeBron. Wait a but, second, like, nobody expected, with me. the exception of Stephen A. Smith, for the Lakers to go to the Western Conference Finals, okay? Like, it, they have a ton of trade assets, and I, I will say the blame is on management, but at the same time, you have trade assets, trade assets to get the bigger players if you can lure them to L.A. And also, sometimes playing on a larger stage makes the public overvalue the ability of players to perform and we don't underestimate that we so here's where I want to go when you're talking about the Lakers roster if you look at their team I blame the players because if you say the Spurs and the Kings and you look at the young talent they have versus what the Lakers have many people feel like the Lakers young talent is actually better and a lot of people still feel like LeBron James, who, what, had 30 points, what, last night? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, is the, the best player numbers in the game. are still incredible. Right. Correct. So I blame the players because guess why? You got to be able to deal with trade rumors. You still got to come out and do your job. You're still supposed to play hard as you can. Yes, they had injuries, but they still struggled whether LeBron was in the lineup or outside of the lineup. But, Jay Rose, don't you think playing with LeBron automatically inflates the value of some of those players? Like, are they that good? Yeah, that's my thing. So expectations become way loftier when you have LeBron James. Is, the maybe the question is, the is there going to be, Rosello, a better trade offer for New Orleans than what the Lakers can offer them this summer? Well, it depends on where the Knicks are at with a pick. It depends on how confident the Celtics are about Kyrie. The, the, I mean, think, the pick right, is just Zion, right, though, but, right? But the Knicks the point, have nothing else yeah, on Yeah, but roster. the thing is, is like, in these trades... And the, why, the reason the Lakers trade didn't work out if you're the Pelicans is you need the one piece. I don't care about your seven or eight pieces. I need the one piece that gives me a chance to reclaim some kind of value here. The, the thing is, the answer to that is incomplete. I'm sorry. But the, the bigger part of this whole thing is that it's still the same offer this summer. So you didn't need to say yes to it in February when you can still say yes to it in July. I understand that. Right. But my point is, if that doesn't happen, if they don't get Anthony Davis, this whole team, is those guys are all coming back, right? Correct. 
And which would be fun. I remember <laughs> sitting. I remember sitting here the day Anthony Davis declared that he wanted to leave New Orleans, and I told you the Lakers have a 10-day contract right. to get it yeah. done. Magic Johnson on a 10-day contract. Right. And I told you it was not going to happen based on a lot of what he just said, and also the value of the players sometimes get overinflated by playing in the large market. I love the Lakers' young talent, and they've gotten dismissed because we're comparing them to Anthony Davis. But none of those guys are going to be all-stars next year. So if you're going to give up an Anthony Davis, you got to get what he said in return. And, and maybe that would be Zion Williamson. We'll see. We'll find that out May 14th enough. at the draft lottery. Now, let me get you to another very big game last night. West